Hi, this is Anne with Graphic Design How To, and today I'm going to go over kerning, tracking, and letting, and what they are. And I'm going to give you a couple easy ways to remember which is which. All right, let's get started. Okay, so kerning, tracking, and letting are three ways to adjust your type to improve readability and just help the type look nicer. Also, the keyboard shortcuts that I'm gonna tell you about in this video work across all three major design programs, InDesign, Illustrator, and Photoshop. I'll be showing you these in both Illustrator and InDesign though. We, we're not gonna touch Photoshop today. So let's tackle kerning first. When you kern your text, you're adjusting the space between two letters. The way I learned kerning by my professors was to imagine sand being poured in between the letters. So you wanna have the same amount of sand between each letter. Although honestly, I think a better way to think about it is visual spacing. Do some letters seem to be too far apart and others just look too close together? If so, you'll want to adjust the kerning. So in this example, I think maybe the N and the I look pretty far apart. So I'll put my cursor between them and I'll hold Option and then use the left arrow. That's Alt and the left arrow on a PC. So I'll adjust this too a little bit. It's not a very obvious example because this font looked pretty nice to begin with. But let's look at the word have. The H and A look pretty good, but the A and V are really spaced too far apart. And this is a common problem in almost every font. Uh, the A and V are just a little too far apart. So I'm gonna hold Option or Alt and use my left arrow to move these in just a little bit. You can also come up here to your character panel and you'll see a V slash A right here. Now, if you're not seeing that, you'll probably wanna go to show options on the fly out right here. So we can also highlight this and use our up and down arrows to really just nudge it in a little bit. If you're not seeing your character panel or any of these other panels, you can come up here to window and then come down here to type and character. It's kind of hidden. Kerning can be pretty tricky because it's somewhat subjective. One way to check your kerning is to just rotate your whole word upside down. It helps you to kind of see the letters as shapes and you can see big gaps a little easier that way. And then you can kern while it's still upside down if you want to. And once you're done, just rotate it back around. And the way I'm doing that, I'm first selecting it with the selection tool. I'm getting out here beyond the bounding box and then just rotating and holding shift to get it back the other way. Now, if you wanna practice your kerning, there's actually a really cool game that will help you with it. And it's called Kern Type. And here it is. With this game, the first and last letters, you can't move them, but all the other letters you can move so that everything is kerned correctly. So we'll just move this over maybe like this and we'll say done. And then it'll show you what the best kerning or what they think the best kerning is. So the blue is where I should have ended up. And it says I got a 78 out of 100. So if we go into the next one, we'll get another example. I'm gonna go just maybe a little in. I don't wanna come too far in. Normally I would probably do something like this, but you don't wanna go past this level very far. Maybe right here. Okay, so it thought I should go a little bit further, but I got the P almost perfect. So you can play around with this kerning game. Okay, so the way I remember that this is kerning is I say, I wanna add a little kernel of space between the two letters. So I actually have a little corn kernel out here and we'll just put that in there. And you can always remember to add a little kernel of space. Kernel, kerning, yeah. That's how I remember it. It might be goofy, but it helps me. Oh, and by the way, I got this little corn kernel from vectz.com. Okay, so next up is tracking. Tracking is the space between all the letters in a word or in between a few letters at a time. So one way to adjust this, I can just click on the whole text box and then hold Option or Alt and use my right and left arrows to track out that whole word or track it in. And probably most people don't refer to this as tracking in and out. They'll say increase the tracking or decrease the tracking. So tracking in your character panel is going to be this one here, which is also a V and an A, but it's got a whole lot of letters highlighted. So if we want to change the spacing between these three letters, we can highlight those and track those out a little bit using the right and left arrow keys with the option and alt held down. And you'll notice over here in your character panel, 
that this is moving by increments of 20. And that is a setting you can change. If you go into your preferences and then go to type, here's where you can set how much it'll jump at a time by using your left and right arrow keys. So Illustrator will actually allow us to track this really, really far in. Let's see what happens if we go to a negative number. It will let us track it negatively, but not too far. We get a minus 1,000 and we're maxed out, but we can track out further than 1,000. I'll just put this back at zero. Now, a common time when I use tracking is for secondary lines on logos like this one, corn industries. So I'll just select industries and I've got this uh, centered, which you can do right up here in paragraph right here. And then I'll hold option and my, use my right arrow and just move it all the way out to the edge of the word corn, maybe move it over a little bit. So I use tracking a lot in this case. Now to show you letting, I'm going to jump over to InDesign because when I work with full paragraphs and use letting, I'm most often over here in InDesign, although I do use it in Illustrator a lot too. So letting is the space between your lines. So if you want to increase the vertical spacing, all you have to do is hit T, get into your paragraph and highlight a little, and then I'm going to select all with command A. And I'll hold option and then just use my down arrow or my up arrows to increase or decrease the letting. So you can do this by just selecting some text also, and then holding option or alt and the down arrow. And you can see which lines it's changing. It's all the ones that I selected. And you can also see it over here in your character panel. It's the A with the A underneath. When you hold option and use your arrow keys, you can see it changing over there. And it's nice because you can get in here and fine tune it. So let's say you only want to move it a tiny bit. So we'll get rid of the 0.4 and it just moved it slightly. Now there are two ways to remember that letting is the vertical spacing. First, the actual way. Um, back in the day, whenever typesetters would want to increase the spacing between their lines, they would actually insert pieces of lead between the text blocks. So that's why it's called leading. And then the way that I remember it, I like to think of adding a lead weight to the text itself, pulling it down. So I added this little lead anvil to show you what I mean. So when we select our text and hold option or alt and use the down arrow, that lead weight is pulling the text down. Yes, I know it's extremely dorky, but that's how I remember it. All right. I hope this video has helped you learn a little more about typography and how it relates to graphic design. And if you like the video, please click on the like button and I'll see you next week with another graphic design tutorial. Thank you.